Hello, our family. It's Pastor Phil. Uh, we're so excited to be able to uh, bring you a brand new series. Of course, we've only got a few more Sundays left in the year. Um, and what an amazing God we serve. It's just amazing to me that we are still here. We are still standing. We are still alive. Though we are in the midst of a pandemic, um, it is, it is a, a gift to each of us. And I think all of us appreciate life just a little bit better. Every day above ground, my daddy used to tell me, uh, is a good day. And when you consider all that is happening in the world, surely um, we have the right to be thankful. Thankful that God has kept us. Thankful that God has never left us. Thankful that the Lord um, is with us. Thankful. So really, this should be a season of thanksgiving. Um, even though we've come through the Thanksgiving holiday, every day should be a, thanks, a day of thanksgiving. The scripture reminds us that we should give thanks in all things because this is the will of God concerning us in Christ Jesus. Listen, I hope that you're staying safe. I hope that you are uh, staying um, away from crowds. I hope that you are washing your hands, masking up. Um, it's going to take all of us to uh, beat this pandemic back. Ultimately, God is in control, but we have to do our part every day. Uh, you have to be vigilant. We're going to talk about that in a minute. You got to be vigilant and sober, and we have to be able to make right decisions. Um, and, you know, wearing a mask is not a political statement. It's not partisan. It's not Republicans and Democrats. This is about humanity. And if you say you love love God's people and you love people in general, put a mask on, mask up, man up and mask up um, and make sure that we are uh, doing everything we can to protect our loved ones, protect our neighbors, neighbors and show love uh, for one another. So this is my encouragement to you. As you know, in our region, uh, the COVID numbers are going off the chart. So I encourage you to stay safe. If you can stay at home, um, live in the bubble um, until um, God gives us a release to come on out. Um, listen, I am so excited to be also in this Christmas season. I want to say to everyone as we get closer, I'm just going to say it now. Merry, Merry Christmas to you. I pray um, that you have a safe holiday, that you enjoy family, but that at the same time you social distance and do what must be done to our young people, our millennials. Take this seriously. I know how it is for you all. You feel like if you get it, you're going to just breeze right through it. Take it from some older people. Take it from an older person. Mask up. Protect your mother, protect your father, protect your siblings, protect your grandparents, um, you know, protect um, those people that you say you love. Don't don't be cavalier with this because you could be the one who could impact your family. I've heard so many stories um, of family members uh, who are coming into the house um, and, you know, not taking the proper precautions because they're not taking it seriously. Um, and family members have passed away, two and three family members. So let's be wise. Let's walk in love, um, authentic and genuine love so that we can beat this um, pandemic back and we can gather back in the house of the Lord. Listen, there's no place I'd rather be. I got to be honest with you. Every time I step in here, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Surely God is everywhere, but there's something beautiful about the temple of God. That's why David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord, because in the house of the Lord, there is joy. In the house of the Lord, there is favor. In the house of the Lord, there is healing. In the house of the Lord, there is grace. In the house of the Lord, there is fellowship. In the house of the Lord, there is the presence of God, and there is the fullness of joy. Listen, I pray today that as we get ready to get into this word, um, that your heart is ready to receive. Um, we've spent time with the Lord and um, believe that this is the word that we are to finish the year off with. And of course, we'll have our Christmas message um, and our Christmas presentation. So excited about that on the 27th. Uh, but for the next couple of weeks, um, we're going to come with a theme. Listen, it's very simple. Two words, finish strong. And for a subtitle this uh, Sunday and probably next, we're going to use the terminology or the subtitle stand. Um, it is critically important that in not only this season, but every season of our life, we learn how to stand. But before I can finish strong, I got to be able to stand up. Before I can press my way forward, I got to be able to stand on two feet. Uh, but before I can move forward, I have to learn how to withstand some things. And the scripture uh, that we see here that I'm going to read in a minute um, out of Ephesians chapter 6 
Paul does some really cool stuff. And when we talk about Ephesians chapter 6, what do we always talk about? We always talk about the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the belt of truth, right? The shield of faith and the sword of the spirit. But I'm going to come at it from a different perspective, right? And I'm going to talk to you about standing and what it means to stand. Because before the apostle really jumps in, right, he tells us that we have to stand. Let's pick up. Um, and Ephesians chapter six, verse 10, look at what it says. He says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord, draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might, put on the full armor of God for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armored soldier so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and the strategies and deceits of the devil. Man, the apostle Paul is preparing these people in Ephesus to be able to fight and stand, right, uh, against the enemy. And I'm going to kind of go line upon line and break this down for you. The composition of the book of Ephesians, the apostle Paul wrote the letter while he was in prison in Rome about 62 um, AD in the year of our Lord. And we understand that this would be the same time as the epistle of Colossians and Ephesus was a large metropolis where there was a lot of craziness going on. If you remember and you read in the text, you will know that the apostle left Timothy there to a establish um, the church and he encouraged Timothy right and ministered to Timothy about pastoring and shepherding these people and the book of first and second Timothy are really written to him to establish him and correct him direct him train him up as a young pastor young preacher um, a young elder in the church of the Lord to be able to encourage the people and so we understand that the same book that Paul wrote or the same letter he wrote to Ephesians is applicable to you and me right now in the 21st century. We understand that there is a battle that goes on. There is a warfare that goes on. And our warfare, watch this, is not with brother and sister, not with nation and nation, not, not with country and country. But watch this. Our struggle, as it talks about in the scripture, is not with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. It is against the enemy who is the hinderer, the hinderer of our soul. He can't stop me. Watch this, because he didn't start me. In other words, he doesn't have the ability to stop me. All he can do, the enemy, the evil one, Satanos, a Lucifer, all he can do, watch this, is try to hinder my walk with God, put roadblocks in the way and hurdles that I have to jump over and, and try to bring temptation in my life to get me off of the plan, the purpose, the intention, and the will of God. I understand that the enemy of my soul is intentionally trying to hinder me because he can't stop me. Why? Because he doesn't have the power of life and death. Why? Because he's not omniscient. He's not all-knowing. He's not sovereign. He's not powerful. Come on. He, all he has is lies and deceit. And so through lies and deceit, come on, he tries to hinder and stop, come on, the move of God and the people of God and the kingdom of God from forcefully advancing. And he has failed, come on, since the beginning. And he will continue to fail because we now are the called of God who know who we are in Christ, embrace who we are in Christ, and walk Walk out who Christ says we are. So devil, you can do whatever it is you want to do. Come on. But I am called. I am anointed. I'm appointed. I am righteous. I am justified. Come on. I am forgiven. I am accepted. I am healed. I am called. Watch this. God, come on, has taken his wonderful love, his wonderful, precious Holy Spirit and given it to me as a child of God. So devil, you can do what you want to do. And we understand that even in Ephesus, there was this attempt, attack of the devil, come on, to try to hinder the people of God. And so even in this season, when we think about COVID, come on, and when we think about unemployment, we think about political unrest, we think about, you know, global warming, we think about unemployment, uh, you know, being high and people losing their jobs and the economy and maybe a potential shutdown, right? Watch this. All of these things, uh, come on, are distractions to take our mind off of God. Take our mind off of why we were created. Take our mind off of the intention and the purpose and, and that we were created as children of God. And so, and so today, I'm going to encourage you to finish strong. 
That, that, the, that the end, come on, of the year is upon us. Watch this. And we don't have to look to 2021 for the manifestation of God's power. God wants us to finish strong. I remember playing football. I remember running track. I, and, you know, I've never played a sport, come on, where we gave up in the third quarter or we gave up in the ninth inning or we gave up in the fourth quarter if it, uh, if it was basketball. Well, you, all, you had to be able to play strong. You had to be able to give your all. And I remember uh, running track track for uh, Miss Evelyn Lewis. Miss Evelyn Lewis was Carl Lewis and Carol Lewis, his mom, the Willingboro Track Club. And it was interesting because you've heard me say this before. Mrs. Lewis said to me um, as I was running track and I was a sprinter, but I would do the 200 and do the 400 every now and again. And she said to me, Philip, she said, you are a sprinter by nature, uh, but there's something I need to teach you, not only just in your 100 and your 200 and in your quarter, but listen, you got to learn how to keep your form. Because when you get tired, come on, your form breaks down. And when your form breaks down, listen to me, when the rigor mortis sets in, when your form breaks down, come on, you're not as efficient and as effective. Come on, and you end up, come on, slowing your own self down because your body is weary. But if you train your brain, come on, to keep your form, regardless of how tired you get, you will continue to be effective and get um, the, 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 most, uh, the, the most positive uh, outcome out of your races. And, and I learned that. And so, you know, we would run hills. And in running hills, she would always tell you, get those knees up and pump those arms. And, and, and when we would run, it was intentional. We were training our brain, training our body to keep its form. So even when tiredness and weariness set in, even when, watch this, our endurance wasn't as it should be, come on, the more, come on, that we kept our form, the more efficient that we were in our running. I feel like we have to be able to have, come on, a check of our form right now. With all that is going on and all that is in the world and all of this craziness, come on, we can get weary. Come on, but every now and again, we need to stop and check our form. Just, just do a form check. What uh, Are you praying? Come on. Are you in the word of God? Are you encouraging the things of God? Do you have your private time of worship? Do you have a time where you can practice your spiritual disciplines? You're, you're checking your form because if you are not careful, the weariness, come on, will settle in. And before you know it, your form goes away. So you're not praying in the morning. Come on. Before you know it, your form goes away so you're not reading the word. Before you know it, you're binging on Netflix and you don't have time for Jesus. And what happens is there is a breakdown. And so we're in the fourth quarter. Come on, with just a few minutes left in 2020 and it's time for a form check. It's, it's time for you to check your form because if you check your form, you'll have a revelation, come on, that you may have dropped off on some of those critical things. That, 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 and, and it's crazy because we didn't always run. Sometimes we would just do this. We would just, we would just do this. This is all she told us to do. Get your knees up. Get it in your mind that your knees have to be up. Get, your, get it in your mind that your, your arms have to move. In other words, we were training our brain, come on, to keep our form. Any good basketball player knows you've got to shoot hundreds and thousands. What? Of free throws because the more free throws you shoot come on the more come on you will be ready when you get to that foul line and you have to shoot come on you'll be ready why because your form is perfect come on your form is perfect practice makes perfect any solid football player I was a defensive back and any good solid football player knows that you got to get in your stance come on and you've got to be ready to back up and you've got to continually do that why because I'm training myself and one of the things that if we're going to finish strong this year. We're going to get in place and we're going to do it to the glory of God. If we're going to cross the finish line if we're going to go into 2021 appropriately, come on, we need to form check. We need to check our form. Come on, we need to get ourselves in the mindset, come on, that we're going to go forward. Come on, we're not going to die in 2020. We're going to cross the finish line and we're going to go into 2021 with power. We're going to go into 2021 with anointing. We're going to go into 21, uh, 2021, come on, with purpose and intentionality. Remember that word because it's coming up again because God has anointed us watch this to be able to stand that 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 this high, this whole message is going to be about us standing about us taking a position come on that honors God taking a position that gives us the ability to have our balance and our equilibrium 
It's interesting. It's interesting here because when you think about the book of Ephesians, as I probably shared with you before, Paul really talks about the possessions that we have in Christ, right? This whole idea that as children of God, right, we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. That's in chapter one. He literally, uh, you know, in, in the very first chapter wants to remind us that in Christ, we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Chapters two and three, watch this, the Christian's position in Christ. So not only Listen, am I, watch this, not only am I blessed with all spiritual blessings seated in the heavenly realm, watch this, but in Christ, in Christ, my position is solidified. I am a fellow citizen with the saints and member, watch this, and a member of the household of God. So, so I'm seated in heavenly places, but I'm also, watch this, in the household of God uh, and I, I have fellowship with the saints. Uh, and, and so we get now to chapters four through six and it's six and it's the Christian's purpose in Christ. To have a walk worthy of our calling. By the time Paul gets to chapter 6, right? By the time he gets down here, we understand that Paul is trying to communicate something very simple. Watch this. And it is for us, listen, to learn how to stand. You'll, you'll hear a word and there also that is withstand. Withstand means to remain undamaged or unaffected or to resist. So I can stand, come on, because nothing's resisting me. But watch this. When I learn to withstand something, watch this. I'm remaining undamaged and unaffected. I'm, 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 I have the capacity to resist. So when I'm withstanding something, it means that something is resisting me. It means that there is a force that is coming against me. Come on. So when I'm withstanding, I got to learn to brace myself. I, I got to learn to prepare myself. I got to I got to learn how to how to how to get my balance and I got to learn how to hold it because it means that while I'm standing something is withstanding something is coming against me and to withstand it that means I've got to fight the resistance. Paul's going to talk about it here in Ephesians 6 and 10 in a minute. I want to jump up. I want to jump up uh, right into uh, verse 10. I want to jump right into Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Uh-huh. It says this. In conclusion, be what? Strong in the Lord. Mhm. Mm Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might. Paul is making sure to tell the people of God, watch this, that they ought to, here it is, find strength in the Lord. He, he says, after all that I've shared with you about your position in Christ and your possessions in Christ, and after all I've shared with you about what you have in Christ, come on, remember this, come on, that your strength does not come from man. You've got to find strength in the Lord. Point one, you've got to draw strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. I know, I know we think that we get strength from other places, but there is no strength. Come on. There is no energy. There is no ability. There is no might. Come on. That is greater than the strength of the Lord. And he says, in my conclusion, based on what I just told you, come on, be strong where? In the Lord. That, that you have the capacity to have a strength beyond your natural strength. To have a strength beyond your mental acuity. To have a strength beyond, come on, your own intestinal fortitude. To have a strength that is, watch this, in you by the power of God. And we can't look, come on, to people and to things to give us the strength that we need. Because people are funny. They'll be with you today and not with you tomorrow. Things, come on, will not uh, accomplish the strength that you need. But it is the internal power of the holy God that lives inside of you that will give you strength to endure. Strength to stand. Strength, watch this now, to uh, lift up your head, square your shoulders, plant your feet. Come on and be ready to go forward no matter what comes against you. Uh, he says in my conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. That Which means, watch this, you got to be connected. That strength does not come to you or me, come on, by just because we're around Christian people. You've got to know God for yourself because in your union, in your connection with him, when you are one with him, come on, he reminds us that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So if that is true, what we will know is that I, listen, don't need people for strength. My strength comes from the Lord. People then can encourage the strength that I have. But listen, whether you're with me or whether you're not with me, I am still strong in him. I am still planted in him. I'm still, watch this, his possession. 
And this is the beauty of the kingdom of God. Paul says, before we get into this uh, other stuff and we begin to talk about the, you know, the helmet and we begin to talk about the breastplate and we begin to talk about the sword and the shield and the feet and the, and the belt. Watch this. He said, make sure that your strength, your source of strength, come on, is that unmovable, unmatchable, unchangeable, consistent strength that comes only from God and not from man. He said, be strong where? In the Lord. I love this. I love this. Watch this. And, and so and so point one is find strength in the Lord. Listen, point two is stand up like a well-prepared soldier. My guy, this is my guy. We've been riding for, I don't know, 15 years now. Every now and again, I'll pull him out just to remind you what we should look like in the spirit realm. I, I know he's missing his sword. His sword's in the back. I mean, his shield, his shield's in the back. Uh, but 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 this is what we should look like every day, right? That we are dressed in the spirit, that we're intentional about it. Because look at what he says in verses, uh, verse 11. Verse 11, he says, put on what? The full armor of God for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier. Here's the why. So that you may be able to, to successfully, what I say, stand up against all the schemes and strategies and deceits of the devil. Now, there's a couple of things here that you need to understand. This is what we should be dressing ourselves in every day. Now, we've all heard the message, and I've preached on it probably a thousand times, so I'm not going to go into every piece um, of, of equipment that, that this heavily armed soldier, this well-dressed, heavily armed soldier is. But listen, he is covered from what? The crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And the important and imperative part is, watch this, you've got to have enough sense to put the armor on for yourself. Right? Mama can't put the armor on you. You got to put your own armor on. You, you, you got to put on your shoes. You got to, you know, put on your belt of truth, which holds everything together. You got to put on the breastplate. You got to put on the helmet. You got to pick up your own sword. You've got to carry your own shield. In other words, you have to have the mind, watch this, to dress yourself like a well-prepared, according to the uh, Amplified, watch this, according to the Amplified, it says a, a heavily armed soldier. That the body of Christ, come on, in this season, why, why is it important? And let me just say this. Why is it important for me to have my head right? Why is it important for me to have my headgear? Because that's where my brain is. Come on, if I take a blow to the brain, come on, it could kill me. And the idea, come on, is that we have to be renewed in our thinking. We have to be renewed. If I'm going to finish strong, y'all, if I'm going to finish strong, I've got to make sure that I'm thinking right. Because if I'm thinking wrong, come on, I, I listen, one of, the, one of the easiest ways to defeat yourself is to have stinking thinking. One, one of the easiest ways to stop your momentum, come on, if you believe you're going to fail, guess what, baby? You're going to fail. It will be given according to you, according to your belief. And so if you don't believe in yourself and you don't believe in the God in you and you don't believe in the word of God, essentially you are, uh, come on, a soldier without a helmet. And that helmet of salvation reminds us that I am secure in Christ Jesus. Jesus, come on, I am, you know what I'm going to say, signed, sealed, and delivered. And when I get that and I know who I am, I embrace who I am, and I walk out who God says I am, watch this, I understand that I got to have that helmet on because I got to get my head right. You see, and any good, any good athlete knows that if you start the fight of thinking that you're defeated, you're going to be defeated. If you start the race thinking that you're not going to win, you can guarantee you're not going to win. If you go into the game with a bad attitude, come on, you better know, come on, that, that, that you're, you're probably either not going to get in the game, and if you do, you're not going to do well. You've got to renew your mind. We've got to renew our mind. Come on, 2020, if you're not careful, could hit you with distress, could hit you with pressure, come on, could hit you with questions and doubts and fears and all that other kind of stuff. If you're not careful, come on, it will begin in your mind, and then it will manifest itself in the way that you live out your life. He says, in conclusion, watch this, uh, no, he says, watch just put on the full armor of God. And then he says here, if you're going to do this successfully, watch this, you're going to be able to do what? Stand up. Somebody say stand up with me. 
You're going to stand up. See, there's something very powerful about standing up because when you're sitting down, you're in a relaxed a mode. And when you're laying down, come on, you're ready to go to sleep. But when you're standing up, you got your wits about you. Come on. You've got your balance. You've got your equilibrium. You're spiritually, come on, grounded when you're standing up. He said you could stand up against the what? Schemes, which means, come on, that there is a plot that the enemy has to try to take you out. That there is a scheme. He's scheming. We used to use that word back in the day, back in the 80s, when somebody was scheming, they was getting into something crazy. Oh, you scheming, bro. And the reality is, come on, is that the devil is always scheming. That means he has plots and plans. Come on, and schematics. A schematic is the thing that you see it's drawn. When somebody has put a plan together, they put a schematic down that gives the plan to the attempt or to build something. In other words, the schematic, the schematic or the scheme of the enemy is his plan that is designed to destroy you, come on, to hinder you, come on, and to wipe you out. This is the beauty of our God. He says that if I, listen, if I dress myself right, come on, I'll be able to do what? Stand up against the schemes of the enemy. You're sick and you're going to die. No, that's a scheme, devil. Come on, you don't have power to take my life. I will live and not die, and I will declare the works of the Lord. Oh, you know, your children will never be saved. Oh, that's a lie devil. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Come on. You're going to be poor all your life. Oh no devil. Come on. My God will supply all of my needs according to the riches and glory. And so when he brings his schemes out and his schemology come on and his trickology you have the word of God come on that will give you the capacity come on to foil and, pl and do what? Stand up against it. Come on. There's something powerful about standing up and squaring your shoulders and putting your you know head up in the air come on knowing that God has your back look what he says you will stand up against all the schemes watch he doesn't stop with schemes he says and strategies that the in the boardroom of hell come on the enemy is strategizing against you you may say pastor that that seems uh, you know very involved sure it's involved because ultimately that enemy is trying to take you out take you down come on discourage you hinder you ultimately destroy you and if the truth be told not only not only is he plotting not only does he have schemes watch this but he has strategies and ultimately he says and the deceits of the devil well, he didn't say deceit of the devil he said deceits multiple pull a multiplicity of lies and foolishness and craziness that causes that wants to cause you to doubt God doubt yourself come on and doubt come on that God loves you and cares for you I love this point because it spoke to me and it was real simple why I lifted it up out of the word of God he said you better get dressed in the spirit because if you don't get dressed in the spirit you're gonna leave either your head exposed watch this or you're gonna leave your heart exposed he says you need to take up the what breastplate of righteousness my righteousness is from God. Come on, and that righteousness from God should cause me to live a life for God. Let me say it again. My righteousness is from God. I am his righteousness. Listen, but also hear me that once I receive righteousness from him, then my righteousness, come on, should translate into right living. I should choose the way of God. And so he said, put on that breastplate of righteousness. Why? He's trying to protect us. You know what I'm talking about? That, that, that this whole idea that my righteousness is of God, but it also, watch this, should cause me to live for God. This breastplate of righteousness protects, come on, my heart, because we have to know that our hearts are deceitfully wicked. Who can know it but God? And so if I am not careful, come on, I can receive righteousness, but then walk in unrighteousness. He says, you better put on this breastplate of righteousness. Why? It will protect you. That, that it will protect you. It will, it will cover you, come on, from the schemes and the plots and the wiles, come on, of the enemy. And, and I love the fact that in the word of God, he is very clear that you've got to learn how to what? Stand up, come on, like a well-prepared soldier. You can stand up against the schemes. You can stand up against the strategies. You can stand up against the deceit, come on, of the devil. This is the beautiful thing about our God and about the kingdom and his expectation for us. His expectation for us is not that we lay down. His expectation for us, come on, is that we stand up. My, my daddy uh, and my mama used to say, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. You, you got to stand up for God. 
And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. You've got to be willing to stand up for what is right. You've got to stand up for righteousness. What is right in the eyes of God. It's better to obey God, come on, and not man. So, you know, it's better to swim against the stream if the stream is moving, watch this, against the will of God. It's better to stand up for holiness and righteousness than it is to get caught in the stream of sin and sinfulness, degradation. It'll pull you down. Even depression, discouragement. So, so what, I'm, what I'm encouraging you today, watch this, is learn to, watch this, uh, if we're going to stand and if we're going to finish strong, we got to stand up like a well-prepared soldier. We got to make sure that we are not falling for the lies, the deceit, the schemes, and the strategy of the devil. We've got to dress ourselves. And then ultimately he says, listen, pick up the shield of faith because the shield of faith is going to allow you to, watch, quench all the fiery darts of the enemy, schemes, strategies. Come on, lies, deceits. Come on, he's, it's like he's standing at a distance and he's firing these darts at you and firing these lies at you and firing these schemes at you come on and the shield of faith which was an oblong shield that would cover from head to toe and they would be able to fight off come on the lies deceits the schemes and the strategies of the enemy this is critically important to every believer every believer he said put on that full armor that you may be able to stand up yeah like a well prepared soldier so we're going to pause right here. Um, I knew there was so much information in here that this would be a two-part series. I don't know, maybe we'll carry it into the first of next year. But the point being, finish strong. Make sure you tune in next week uh, so you can get part two of the message because there's still a whole lot more meat on the bone that I want to share with you. Hey, listen, maybe you're out there today and you um, are in a place where you don't know Christ. I want to offer you Jesus. In this Christmas season, there is no greater gift the gift that keeps on giving is Christ Jesus. So if you want to accept Christ today, I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to him. Pray a simple prayer with me. Dear Lord, come into my heart. I believe that Jesus is the son of God. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead. Lord, I trust you. Save me this day and this moment. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you for forgiveness. Touch my heart. I want to be a child of God in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God and welcome home. All right, don't forget to come back next week for part two of Finish Strong. We're just getting started. We got a whole lot more to share with you. Can't wait to fellowship with you next week. All right, God bless and a Merry Christmas to you.